Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Monday Night Raw review. Monday Night Raw tonight was from the Smoothie King Center in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I am back with the, you know, schedule again, you know, reviewing Monday Night Raw, AW, SmackDown this week. Of course, last week I was in Disney World, so I hope you all enjoyed the, uh, the Disney World vlogs. Had a lot of fun there. It was uh, one of my best moments of the year so far there in Disney. Would like to go back someday. But just had a lot of fun. And it is Royal Rumble week. Which the Royal Rumble is this Saturday. Which I am looking forward to. I know it's going to be a good show. And you know WWE tonight. They had their go home show for you know the Royal Rumble and My Night Raw. And in my opinion, the show was awful tonight. My Night Raw was awful. The show started out hot. And then as we got to Ivy Nile versus Valhalla, it just went downhill from there, in my opinion. But like I say, the crowd there in New Orleans tonight, they made some noise. They made a lot of noise throughout the show. So it was a hot crowd for uh, New Orleans tonight. But tonight on My Night Raw, we had New Day versus Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. We had Ivy Nile versus Valhalla. We also saw Dominic Mysterio in action where he had taken on The Miz. We had Ivar versus Chad Gable. We had Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. And in the main event, it was Drew McIntyre versus Damian Priest. And we also had a face-to-face uh, -face between CM Punk and Cody Rhodes, which I thought was absolutely great, uh, that segment, when I talk about it. But overall, My Night Raw, awful show it was tonight. But anyways, let's jump right into the review. My Night Raw opened up tonight. And, of course, it opened up with, Whoa! Yes, Seth Rollins, the World Heavyweight Champion. He came out to address, you know, his injury. And last week on My Night Raw, Seth Rollins faced off against Jinder Mahal for the World Heavyweight Championship, where Rollins ended up injuring himself. Yeah, injuring himself in a Jinder Mahal match, you know, out of all matches there. But Rollins ended up tearing his MCL, and he also has a partially torn meniscus. And there was talks I read in articles saying that he could possibly miss WrestleMania and that the plans are in jeopardy. So... Seth Rollins came out, and he was wearing a green suit. He was wearing a lime green suit, and he had a knee brace around his left knee. So he was limping his way down to the ring, and even Michael Cole on commentary mentioned that Rollins was injured in his match against Jinder Mahal last week, and his WrestleMania dreams could be in jeopardy. So Rollins stood in the ring. Of course, the crowd there in New Orleans were going, whoa, sing this song. So Rollins, you know, he looked like he was about to cry. And he was moved by the reception from the crowd there. And, you know, he's trying to hold back tears. The crowd started chanting, thank you, Seth. And he got on the mic he kept shouting, New Orleans, welcome to Monday Night Rollins. Rollins wanted to say that it has been a long week and that he really appreciates the reception. The crowd there ended up giving Rollins another ovation for him. Rollins wanted to say that last week he was in the ring 
defend the World Heavyweight Championship against Jinder Mahal. So he had saying that he jumped off the ropes and hit uh, Mahal with a moonsault, like he does in most of his matches. He kept saying that he felt his knee go in a way it is not supposed to. He kept saying he did what he does. He did what he does, and he finished the match and he beat Jinder Mahal. So Rollins ended up saying that he then spoke to the crowd and went to the back. Rollins ended up mentioning that when he sat down in the back, it set in that he might be out for a long time. He kept saying that he spoke backstage about how every single tally defense sees him only getting better and stronger. He kept saying that he felt hopeless after the match and felt like a liar. He kept saying that he thought for the first time that it was a real possibility that he might miss WrestleMania. So Rollins ended up saying that, that he had an MRI and that he got the results of the MRI back. He kept telling the crowd and everyone that it wasn't great. He ended up announcing that he has a grade 2 tear of his MCL and a partially torn meniscus as well. He won't say that with surgery, we're looking at 3 to 4 months. So with him going to get surgery, he would have missed WrestleMania. So Rollins ended up saying that if it was up to him, he'd be out here next week stomping people's heads into the mat because that's what he loves to do. He ended up saying, unfortunately, it's not up to him. Rollins ended up saying that we don't really know what the future holds and that he is taking it day by day and week by week. So that led to Imperium making their way to the ring. So we had Gunther end up making his way to the ring alongside Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci. So the crowd started booing Gunther as he got into the ring. Rollins got on the mic. He ended up saying that he hasn't got time for this. He ended up saying if uh, Imperium are here to make an example of him, then they can just get it over with. So Kaiser and Vinci stood at ringside. Gunther ended up getting on the mic. He had telling Rollins not to worry about them. He ended up saying that Kaiser and Vinci got a match against the New Day later. Gunther ended up saying that Rollins should concentrate on him. Gunther ended up saying that they have been avoiding each other for quite some time. He ended up saying today is a great opportunity to come out here and let Rollins know what he thinks of him. So Rollins ended up telling Gunther to have at it. Good to telling Rollins that right from the beginning, he has been in the top spot. He kept saying that Rollins has to come out every week and fight for every victory. And that he has to bring dignity, respect, and honor to the championship. He kept saying that he is a champion everyone can be proud of. Just like him, just like Gunther. So Rollins then chuckled. Gunther ended up saying that it pulls on his heartstrings to see Rollins like this. He ended up saying he's finding out that Rollins might not make it to WrestleMania and that it makes him sad. Rollins then ended up saying that Gunther and his boys should have let him finish. He ended up saying what he was about to say is he doesn't give a damn what the doctors tell him or how hard he has to rehab and push this knee. Rollins once said that he will keep his promise and that he will take the World Heavyweight Championship, into WrestleMania. So Rollins is going to WrestleMania with his knee like this. So Rollins ended up saying that he will do everything in his power to walk out of WrestleMania as the World Heavyweight Champion. So Guthrie ended up saying that he is happy to hear that. He ended up saying last week he thought he'd see the big champion fall. He kept saying now he's going to get to WrestleMania as champion and leave as one. So Gunther ended up admiring and respecting that of Rollins. Gunther ended up telling Rollins that he would do the same thing in his position. So Gunther ended up saying that Rollins reminds him of himself. 
He obtained from one great champion to another great champion. And Gunther ended up botching when the Royal Rumble was going to be. He ended up saying Sunday. Yeah, Gunther thought the pay-per-view or the premium live event was on Sunday when it's on Saturday. So, of course, throughout the night, you were going to hear, oh, the Royal Rumble is this Saturday. It's this Saturday. It's this Saturday. Because of Gunther Botchen. So, Gunther ended up saying that he is going to win the Royal Rumble. And Gunther ended up saying that he will choose Rollins as his opponent for WrestleMania. He ended up saying, with all due respect, he is going to target Rollins' knee, his back, and everything that is not 100%. Of course, Gunther has mentioned, you know, Rollins, because Rollins has a, has a history of knee injuries, of course, his back problems. So Gunther ended up saying that he will beat Rollins and become the World Heavyweight Champion. So Rollins then stared back at Gunther. Rollins ap appreciated Gunther's honesty. He ended up saying Gunther can challenge him at WrestleMania if he wins the Raw Rumble. And Rollins ended up warning Gunther to remember who he is coming after. Gunther then ended up saying that Rollins better remember who is coming after him. So both Gunther and Rollins ended up shaking hands. Gunther then walked off. And all of a sudden, we saw Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston. They jumped both Kaiser and Vinci at ringside. Xavier Woods and Kofi ended up getting Kaiser and Vinci in the ring. Started beating them down. And they ended up throwing Kaiser and Vinci over the top rope. And Gunther was not happy about seeing that. And that's pretty much when Monday Night Raw went to commercial. But overall, I thought this was a good segment to open Monday Night Raw here. Seth Rollins coming out there, you know, telling, you know, everybody that, you know, he has a grade two tier of his MCL and a partially uh, torn meniscus. And that, you know, he will be still going at WrestleMania. He will compete injured, you know, with his knee, you know, being like that. So I knew that Rollins was still going to make it to WrestleMania, even, you know, in his condition now with the torn MCL and the torn meniscus. Now I knew he was going to go. But Gunther, you know, saying to Rollins, oh, when I win the Royal Rumble, I'm coming for your World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. You know, maybe we might see Gunther win the Rumble. But he would have to uh, drop the Intercontinental Championship if he wants a shot at Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. So, Gunther might relinquish the Intercontinental Championship if he wins the Rumble. So without a doubt, Gunther will go for that World Heavyweight Championship. But without a doubt, I see Gunther being the next World Heavyweight Champion. And they're possibly going to make Gunther the longest reigning World Heavyweight Champion when that happens. But very good opening to Monday Night Raw this was. And then, as Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, we had the first match. We had Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci versus Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods. And this was a good match here. Uh, the crowd was hot uh, throughout this match. And, of course, they were hot uh, during the, uh, the opening segment with Seth Rollins. So, as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, you know, the match was already going. Kofi ended up sending uh, Vinci into the ropes. Vinci ended up running Kofi over with a run cross body block. Vinci ended up chopping and kicking Kofi down the corner. So Kofi ended up fighting back. And Kofi ended up scaling the ropes. He ended up hitting a missile drop kick to Vinci. Xavier Woods then tagged in. He started stomping away at Vinci. Woods ended up standing Vinci up. And he started chopping Vinci's chest. Vinci ended up quickly grabbing uh, Woods. And he ended up hitting 
a spot, a shot on the top rope, and then he clothesline uh, Xavier Woods. Ludwig Kaiser ended up tagging in. He started punching away at Woods. Kaiser started kicking Woods in his face, and he stared at Kofi Kingston. So Kaiser ended up chopping Xavier Woods, started stomping uh, him down. Woods started fighting back. He ended up chopping away at Kaiser's chest. So Woods ended up blocking the kick. He started chopping Kaiser's chest a few times, and then he up in a step up in Seguri to Kaiser. Kaiser then rolled out of the ring to recover. Vinci ran in, and Xavier Woods ended up giving Vinci a back by drop out of the ring. Woods then crawled to his corner, but Kaiser pulled him out of the ring. Vinci then delivered a back suplex on the apron to Woods. And Kaiser then ended up sending Woods into the barricade. And then Mighty Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, we saw Vinci end up sending Xavier Woods into the corner. Woods then ended up delivering a super kick to Vinci. So both Woods and Vinci were down at this point in the match. Kofi and Kaiser end up tagging in. Kofi ended up hitting a springboard axe handle off the top rope on Kaiser. And then Kofi knocked Vinci off the apron. Kofi then beat Kaiser down the corner. Vinci then grabbed Kofi, but Kofi ended up punching Vinci down. He clotheslined Kaiser over the top rope, and Kofi hit Vinci with a suicide dive. Kofi immediately ended up getting into the ring. He ended up taking Kaiser out with a suicide dive. Kofi ended up punching away at Kaiser. Vinci ended up wiping uh, Kofi out with a baseball slide. Woods ended up taking out both Vinci and Kaiser with a baseball slide. Kofi and Woods started punching away at both Kaiser and Vinci. Kofi ended up sending Kaiser into the barricade. And so the ref ended up counting them all out. So the match ended in a double count out. So post-match, Kofi ended up sending Vinci into the barricade. He ended up charging at Vinci, but Vinci ended up giving Kofi a back body drop into the crowd. Woods ended up sending Kaiser into the timekeeper's area. Kofi and Vinci end up fighting through the crowd. So Woods started punching and kneeing Kaiser in his face. Kaiser started fighting back to Woods. He ended up sending Woods into the ring post head first. Kaiser ended up sending uh, Woods into the timekeeper's area, started stomping on him. Kaiser then ended up grabbing a steel chair and he headed into the crowd. Vinci ended up holding Kofi up. Kaiser ended up winding up to hit the chair shot at uh, at Kofi, but Xavier Woods ended up taking Kaiser out. Woods started beating Vinci down. Woods ended up grabbing Kaiser and he ended up climbing onto some uh, equipment cases. Woods started punching away at Kaiser, and the crowd was loving what they were seeing here. So Xavier Woods ended up lifting Kaiser up. Vinci then ended up making the save. So both Vinci and Kaiser were going for a double-team suplex on Woods through the tables. Kofi ended up making the save. Kofi then ended up tackling both Vinci and Kaiser off the crates. And they all crashed through the tables. So Woods ended up going also uh, down with uh, Kofi and you know Vinci and Kaiser. So both, uh, both Imperium and the New Day... We're not moving after all of them went through the table. And pretty much that was basically that. But overall, I thought this was a good match here. Really, uh, like the end here, you know, with uh, all of them going through the table. And who knows? Could this lead to maybe Big E maybe coming back and being cleared? Who knows? So then we'll get the New Day versus Imperium. We'll get all three members of the New Day versus Vinci, Kaiser, and Gunther. So, hope that happens at some point. If Big E is cleared to come back, hopefully. And then we had the trailer for uh, WWE 2K24. Of course, Cody Rhodes is going to be on the cover. No surprise there. When they announced 2K24, I'm like, all right, they're putting Cody Rhodes on the cover. 
lo and behold, I was right. So Cody Rhodes is going to be on the cover. If you get in the deluxe edition, you'll have Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair on the cover if you get the deluxe edition. So, but the trailer looked pretty cool. And then we saw the Judgment Day. Judgment Day was backstage. Rhea Ripley ended up saying, this is not good. And she ended up saying that Adam Pearce told her that next week on Raw, Finn Balor and Damian Priest will defend the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship against DIY, Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Organo. She ended up saying that she thinks Drew McIntyre is the least of their worries. Priest ended up saying that he's not trying to fight everyone. And that McIntyre will be handled by him. He ended up saying that he's not the one walking around with a big head. Because they're on the cover of 2K. You know, 2K24. So Priest ended up saying that he also isn't the one going to Adam Pierce's office to make matches for the Judgment Day every other week. You know, of course, when Priest ended up mentioning he's not walking, he's not the one walking around with a big head because they're on the, the cover of 2K24. Of course, he's talking about Rhea Ripley. And of course, you know, he's mentioning Rhea Ripley again because Rhea Ripley ended up going to Adam Pierce's office to make matches for the Judgment Day every other week. So Priest ended up saying that he wants Rhea Ripley to stop going into Adam Pierce's office. Priest ended up saying that he's going to clear his head for this match. He kept saying that the Judgment Day business is under control. So Priest then walked off. Then Rhea Ripley ended up telling J.D. McDonough and Dominic that DIY should have been taken care of long ago. So Balor was shown laughing. So Rhea Ripley then ended up asking uh, Balor, what is so funny? So she ended up saying that Priest will take care of McIntyre alone. She then ended up telling Balor that he'll be at ringside with JD for Dominic's match against The Miz. She ended up saying that it's been a while since she's seen the vicious side of Balor. So Balor then told Rhea, Oh, if you want to see Vicious, I'll show you Vicious. So pretty much that was basically that. You know, Damon Priest getting fed up with Rhea Ripley, you know, going into Adam Pierce's office every other week and making matches for the Judgment Day. So, but overall, that was that. And then we went to Jackie Redman. Jackie Redman was backstage with Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. Jackie Redman ended up asking Ivy Nile what a win against Valhalla would do for her. So Maxine Dupree answered for Ivy Nile. She had saying that Valhalla isn't ready for Ivy Nile. It's starting to uh, sound like Asuka. What Asuka's like, no one's ready for Asuka. So Maxine ended up saying that they don't call Ivy Nile the pit bull for nothing. So the Kree brothers walked up to get Ivy Nile excited heading into her match against Valhalla. So Ivy ended up saying that she's going to get that barefoot freak. And pretty much that was basically that. And then we went to the match, Ivy Nile versus Valhalla. And this is where the show went downhill. Right from here. This match was boring, in my opinion. Absolutely boring. So, we had uh, Ivy Nile end up coming out. She was accompanied by Maxine Dupree. Valhalla came out by herself. She was not accompanied by Ivar because, of course, Ivar, you know, had his match later on in the night against Chad Gable. So, replays were shown of Akira Tozawa Again, the win over Ivar last week, and, you know, after the match, Valhalla ended up attacking Maxine Dupree, and pretty much, you know, that was that. That was what they showed from 
Monday Night Raw last week. So the match got on the way. Valhalla ended up charging at Ivy Nile, but Ivy Nile ended up lifting Valhalla. Valhalla ended up sliding off. Ivy Nile ended up taking her down and started kicking her. Valhalla then ended up kneeing Ivy Nile and started clubbing away at her chest. Ivy Nile then falls to the apron and then to ringside. Valhalla ended up going to ringside and she ended up running Ivy Nile over with a running forearm. She then got Ivy Nile back to the ring. And she started ripping at Ivy Nile's face. Ivy Nile ended up fighting up. And she had pinned a step up in Seguri to Valhalla. Valhalla then ended up biting the bottom rope in frustration. And Ivy Nile then ended up taking it to Valhalla. She had pinned a hesitant takeover. Ivy Nile ended up charging at Valhalla. But Valhalla ended up lifting her and connected with a headbutt. So at the end of the match, Ivy Nile started fighting back. She stood on the top rope. Ivy Nile ended up hitting a avalanche bulldog on Valhalla. And there was a point where Valhalla was going for the cover on Ivy Nile. She ended up getting her feet on the ropes. But the ref ended up catching uh, her doing that. And, I, and uh, Maxine Dupree shouted that uh, Valhalla's feet were on the bottom rope. So after Ivy Nile hit that avalanche bulldog, she ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Ivy Nile ended up win the match. Now I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you all spotted this during this match. You saw her during this match. When it cut to the stage, you saw Nikki Cross walking out. Nikki Cross walked out and she was walking into nothing. She just randomly walked. Like, yeah, very random. Seeing Nikki Cross just walk out there. I don't know what that was all about. But overall, this match was awful. And then we saw Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods. They were recovering backstage and Jey Uso, Yeet, walked up to both Kofi and Xavier. Jey ended up saying that he is excited about what Kofi and Xavier did to Imperium did to Kaiser and Vinci. So Jackie Redman ended up coming up to them. Jackie Redman ended up asking the New Day where it ends with Imperium. Xavier Woods ended up telling Jackie Redman that they're tired of everyone forgetting that they're 12-time tag team champions. Kofi ended up saying because of the unicorns, bootios, pancakes, and high-fiving kids, people think they can't go when they need to. You know what I'm saying? This is a perfect example of what happens when you push them too far. So Kofi ended up saying that they took out the henchmen. They took out Vinci and Kaiser. And now they want the big boss. So Kofi ended up saying that he is challenging Gunther for the Intercontinental Championship next week on My Night Raw. And then Jay ended up saying, yeet. And pretty much that was that. So, yeah, so we're getting Kofi versus Gunther next week on My Night Raw for the, for the Intercontinental Championship. The My Night Raw after the Royal Rumble is going to be in Tampa. So that should be, you know, pretty good. Even though, you know, Kofi is going to take the loss. Because Gunther's not losing the Intercontinental Championship. And then we saw also uh, Damage Control. Damage Control was on My Night Raw tonight. So we saw Bailey, Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kairi Sane. They were shown sneaking around back, backstage in the background. And I'm like, what are Damage Control doing on My Night Raw? No explanation as to why they were on the show tonight. Oh, probably because, oh, it's Royal Rumble. You know, oh, they can appear on the show. And then oh, we went from that awful match with Valhalla and Ivy Nile to an even worse segment, Nia Jax. Now I hear all of you are probably moaning, like, oh, here we go with Nia Jax. Nia Jax ended up making her way to the ring. She got on the mic, 
She ups in the first time she came face to face with Rhea, Rhea Ripley, one of the most dominant champions in women's wrestling history. She got squashed. She ups in the first time she went one on one with Becky Lynch, the man, one of the greatest superstars of this business. She got squashed. She keeps mentioning that because that's the only moment that anybody's going to remember of Nia Jax was when she ended up decking Becky Lynch and bleeding uh, her face. It's the same thing. Same shit. She ended up saying some people might think she's upset that Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch were in the ring talking about WrestleMania. But she's not. She ended up saying that Rhea Ripley wants to face someone she thinks she can beat, like Becky Lynch. She ended up saying that Rhea Ripley knows she can't beat her. She can't beat Nia Jax. She ended up saying that Becky is on her path to WrestleMania. And any path with her in it ends with her getting squashed again. So Nia ended up saying this Saturday at the Royal Rumble, she'll kill both of their dreams. So Becky Lynch end up coming out. Becky end up getting on the mic. She ended up calling Nia Jax a dope. And she ended up telling Nia Jax to shut up. She ended up saying Nia Jax did beat her. So it gives her something new to talk about for the next five years. So Becky then got into the ring. She ended up saying what is interested is going into the Royal Rumble match. And she knows she has a target on her back. She ended up saying no one has a bigger target than Nia Jax. She kept saying that it's not because she's bigger than everybody. It's because that locker room doesn't agree on anything except one thing. And that nobody likes Nia Jax. She kept saying that Nia Jax throws her weight around and has probably injured half of them. Of course. Nia Jax probably injured half of them. There. So Becky is right. You remember all the women that Nia Jax ended up taking out? And they were out with injury because of Nia Jax. So Becky ended up saying this Saturday, she's not sure what she'll enjoy more. Win the Royal Rumble for the second time in her career or watching Nia Jax lose. So then Bailey ended up coming out. Why is Bailey on My Night Raw? Who knows? No explanation. Like I said, no explanation as to why uh, Damage Control was on Monday Night Raw tonight. Oh, because it's the Royal Rumble week. So Bailey ended up getting on the mic. She ended up saying, Ding dong. She ended up saying, Both of these idiots are going to lose. She ended up saying that she was going to find Rhea Ripley, but this is even better. Her two old pals. Bailey ended up saying that she is here to make one thing absolutely clear, and that she is winning the Royal Rumble. She ended up saying that she'll point to the WrestleMania sign because 2024 is the year of, and then Bailey shoved Becky Lynch into Nia Jax, who Nia Jax ended up knocking Becky down. Nia Jax then ended up taking Bailey down, started stomping away at Bailey. Becky ended up getting up, she ended up attacking Nia. Becky Lynch then end up hitting Bailey with the manhandle slam. Nia Jax then end up sending Becky Lynch over the top rope. So Nia Jax then end up delivering a leg drop on Bailey. Nia Jax then smiled at Becky, and that was basically that. So Bailey just came out here just to take a leg drop from Nia Jax. Wow. And then, as My Night Raw came back from the commercial, Becky Lynch was walking backstage. Rhea Ripley ended up coming by. Rhea Ripley ended up saying that Becky might have to make other plans for WrestleMania. And pretty much that was basically that. And then we saw a video from earlier in the day of The Miz trying to warn our truth about the Judgment Day. Our truth ended up telling Miz not to tag in and to watch out for the Mysterio boys, Tom and Nick Mysterio. Our truth's still going on this 
Tom and Nick Mysterio uh, shtick of his. So Miz looked all confused. He had telling truth that Dominic is one guy. <laughs> Very funny. Our truth is just comedic. So, and then we had Dominic versus the Miz, and this was an okay match. Here was a great no, but Dominic was accompanied by, of course, uh, Balor and J.D. McDonough. So the match ended up getting in the way. Both Dominic and Miz locked up. We had the crowd end up chanting, we want truth. So the crowd really wanted to see our truth. Dominic ended up turning Miz in the corner, started shoving him. They ended up locking up again. Miz ended up shoving Dominic into the corner. Dominic ended up charging. He ended up hitting a pair of arm drags to the Miz. So Miz ended up rolling Dominic up and Dominic ended up kicking out. Miz avoided a kick and clotheslined Dominic down. Miz then started kicking and punching away at Dominic into the corner. Dominic ended up kicking Miz in his midsection, started punching him, and he ended up sending Miz through the middle ropes. Dominic then distracted the ref, and that led to Balor punching Miz in his head. Dominic then ended up taking Miz out with a suicide dive. Dominic ended up getting Miz in the ring. And he did the Eddie Guerrero, he started shimmering, you know, the Eddie Guerrero shimmer. So Dominic then ended up hitting Miz with a slingshot senton bomb. He ended up going for the cover to which Miz kicked out. You had Miz end up sending Dominic into the ropes. He connected with a kitchen sink knee to his midsection. Miz then ended up kicking toward JD McDonough, but he ended up avoiding it. Dominic then ended up attacking Miz. He ended up getting to the ring and he ended up knocking him to the floor and then Mighty Night Raw went to commercial. Then as Mighty Night Raw came back from the commercial, both Dominic and Miz were down. Miz started punching away at Dominic as they ended up getting up. Dominic ended up kicking Miz in the knee. Miz ended up fighting back with a pair of clotheslines, which was followed up by a reality check to Dominic. So Miz ended up going for the cover. And Dominic ended up kicking out. So Balor ended up getting on the apron. Miz ended up scaring Balor off of it. Dominic ended up rolling Miz up. But Miz ended up rolling through. And he ended up picking up a two count. Because Dominic kicked out of course. So Miz ended up hitting Balor with a baseball slide. He ended up hitting JD McDonough with a hurricanrana on the floor. Miz then ended up hitting a springboard cross body block on Dominic. He ended up going for the cover, to which Dominic ended up kicking out. So Miz started doing the it kicks to Dominic. Miz then connected with a roundhouse to the back of Dominic's head. Miz ended up setting up for the skull crusher finale, but Dominic ended up countering by sending Miz into the ropes. Miz ended up avoiding a 619 from Dominic, and he was waiting for Ballard to attack him. So McDonough distracted the ref. Ballard ended up attacking Miz. So Dominic ended up hitting Miz with the 619. Dominic then headed to the top rope. He delivered the frog splash onto Miz. Dominic ended up going for the cover. And there you go. Dominic ended up winning the match. Post match, Balor ended up officially attacking Miz. He ended up uh, punching Miz in his head. So DIY ended up coming out. Champ and Gargano ended up making the save. Champa and Gargano end up taking out the Judgment Day. Gargano end up hitting McDonough with the Slingshot Spear. Miz end up taking McDonough. He ended up hitting him with the Skull Crushing Finale. So Gargano and Champa were setting up for the meet in the middle. But Balor ended up pulling McDonough out of the ring. DIY stood tall with Miz at ring, in the ring. And pretty much that was basically that. Overall, this was an okay match. But... Not great in my opinion. So it looks like maybe The Miz might be in DIY's corner next week at ringside on My Night Raw. For the uh, Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship match. And then we saw Jackie Redman. Jackie Redman ended up asking Damian Priest what his mindset is going into a match against Drew McIntyre. Priest ended up congratulating Dominic 
on handling his business, his business, just like priests knew he would. So our troop then walked up to priests. Our troop walked up with a stack of cash. And he was like, oh, this is your cut, priest. So truth was like, we had to talk about Jaden McDonough. Priest ended up saying that he has some serious stuff going on. And he appreciates his sense of humor. So our truth then realized it's not the time and says he'll catch him later. So our truth then walked off. Priest ended up going back to Drew McIntyre. He ended up saying that McIntyre likes to talk. So let's do some real talk about McIntyre. He ended up saying that McIntyre talks about being the man around here. But it was at a time when everyone was struggling. He ended up saying that as soon as everyone got back to 100%, he couldn't beat Roman Reigns or Gunther and now Seth Rollins. He ended up saying out of pure jealousy, he wants to make sure that he doesn't become champion. He ended up saying whether it's cashing in or winning the Rumble and getting the title at WrestleMania, he will be champion. He ended up saying that as far as McIntyre goes, tonight he will receive his punishment. So that was that. Pretty good uh, promo from uh, Priest here. And then as Mike and I Raw came back from the commercial, we had Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed was backstage. He ended up saying that he is fully aware that Jey Uso intends on becoming a singles champion. But so does him. So does Bronson Reed. And Reed then ended up challenging Jay to face him on Raw next week so he can be made an example of by Bronson Reed, by Big Bronson Reed. So pretty much that was that. And then we had Chad Gable versus Ivar. You know, same old, we've seen Gable and Ivar go at it before. Before the match got underway, we saw a video done earlier in the day where Chad Gable was lifting Otis backstage. And Maxine Dupree ended up saying that she has a new rally towel for Chad Gable and Otis. So Akira Tozawa tried to lift Otis up, but Tozawa was unsuccessful of lifting up Otis, who was a giant. So that was that. So the match got on the way, which the match was fine, in my opinion. Chad Gable ended up attacking Ivar with a rolling calf kick. Gable ended up coming off the top rope, and he had chopping Ivar. Ivar ended up reversing the whip into the corner, but Chad Gable ended up slingshotting over Ivar. Gable then ducked the clothesline from Ivar, but Ivar ended up hitting a spinning slam to cut off Gable's momentum. Ivar then ended up going for a back suplex, but Gable flipped through. Gable ended up drop kicking Ivar, and he ended up avoiding an elbow drop. We had Gable end up ducking a clothesline from Ivar. He ended up kicking Ivar's knee. He ended up hitting a flipping neck breaker. Gable ended up going up to the top rope. He connected with a diving headbutt for a near fall on Ivar. Gable then ended up lifting Ivar for a German suplex, but Ivar ended up elbowing out. So Gable ended up trying to lift Ivar again, but once again, Ivar ended up fighting out. Ivar then ended up going for a suplex, but Gable ended up attempting to pull Ivar over the top rope. Ivar then ended up coming off the apron. He ended up splashing Gable at ringside. And then Minot Raw went to commercial. Then when Minot Raw came back from the commercial, Chad Gable had Ivar on the top rope. And I like this spot here. Gable ended up hitting Ivar with a superplex, which was great. Great spot here. You know, Gable hitting that superplex on Ivar. So Gable then ended up hitting a cross body block that sent uh, both him and Ivar over the top rope. Gable ended up attacking Ivar. He ended up getting Ivar into the ring. Ivar quickly grabbed Gable, ended up hitting a double underhook sit out power bomb. And so Chad Gable ended up kicking out of that. So we had Ivar end up taking Chad Gable down with sit out 
Spinebuster, and Chad Gable ended up kicking out of that. We had Gable end up hitting a Bridge of German Suplex on Ivar, and Ivar ended up kicking out of that. So Chad Gable headed to the top rope. Ivar ended up cutting Gable off. Ivar ended up going for a Superplex, but Gable swung through. He had pinned a German Suplex off the second rope to Ivar, which was great. So Gable headed to the top rope, and out of nowhere, Valhalla appeared. Valhalla ended up screaming in Gable's face. Ivar then ended up grabbing Gable, and he ended up nearly dumping Gable on his head. Gable landed hard on his shoulder. Ivar ended up going to the top rope for a doom salt, to which he did. So Ivar ended up going for the cover, and there you go. Ivar ended up win the match. But overall, the match itself, it was fine. It was okay. And as My Night Raw came back from the commercial, we had the face-to-face -face between Cody Rhodes and CM Punk. So Cody Rhodes ended up making his way out first. Of course, we got, whoa, from the crowd. So Cody got into the ring. Before Cody could have said anything, CM Punk came out. CM Punk got a big reaction. And it was 10 years ago that CM Punk would compete in the Royal Rumble. And it would be his final match for almost a decade. So Cody and Punk stood in the ring across from each other. The crowd was on fire. They liked what they were seeing with Punk and uh, Cody in the ring. So Punk ended up getting on the mic. He was, he was going to say that he was going to say before they start. They should take a moment to appreciate this moment. He kept saying they've taken very different paths to this moment. He kept saying Saturday night, things change. And that he hopes on Sunday morning that him and Cody are still friends. So Punk ended up saying that he wants uh, him and Cody to enjoy this moment. So the crowd started cheering and, you know, just cheering for uh, Cody and Punk. So Cody then got on the mic. He kept saying, so, Nola, more specifically CM Punk, what do you want to talk about? Punk started looking up at the ceiling, and he appeared to be pondering something. Punk ended up saying that he wants to talk about Cody's dad, Dusty. So, Punk ended up saying that in 2007, Cody's father, Dusty, called him to tell Punk that he was sending his youngest son, Cody, to Ohio Valley Wrestling, short sure for OVW to start his journey as a professional wrestler. He ended up saying that Dusty wanted Punk to keep an eye on Cody. Punk ended up saying that he didn't know if he was the guy for the job, and that he didn't know if Cody would need a guardian angel. He ended up saying when the American Dream asks you for a favor, you say yes. He ended up saying that it wasn't a hard job. Punk ended up saying that he stayed out of Cody's way. And that he didn't get into any trouble he couldn't talk himself out of. And then fall into the vices some of their contemporaries did. So Punk ended up saying that he watched Cody grow from a preliminary wrestler into a bona fide main event championship caliber superstar. He ended up saying that it might sound condescending coming from him. But Cody knows Punk. So Punk ended up saying that he is proud of Cody. Punk ended up saying that he brings the story up and Dusty up because on Saturday, he feels like he's breaking a promise. He ended up saying that in the Royal Rumble, when the bell rings and they cross paths, he would be looking out for Cody. And that he'll be looking for Cody. He ended up saying that he'll do what he has to do. He'll punch Cody in the face and throw him over the top rope because he is going to run the Royal Rumble. And main event WrestleMania. 
So Cody ended up saying that Punk is not alone in that feeling of talking to him, but thinking about Dusty. He ended up saying that he has worked with countless legends, luminaries, and dignitaries in this industry, such as Michael Hayes, Bruce Pritchard, Triple H, and Paul Heyman. He ended up saying when they see him, they can't help but see the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. He ended up saying that it's a large shadow. But he's done everything in his power since he left here to be the light and the shadow. He ends up saying that he wants to subvert expectations of his last name and be his own man. Cody ends up saying that he showed up to OVW with no matches under his belt, a complete nepotism hire. And there was CM Punk, who toiled on the independent scene for 10 years, who could have treated him horribly, but he didn't. He ends up saying that they became great friends. And, that way, and that's what makes this bittersweet because in the Royal Rumble, there are no friends. So Punk ended up asking about Sunday morning. Punk ended up saying that he knows about the Royal Rumble because he's been in more of them than Cody. So Punk ended up saying that he can separate business from personal. Can Cody? Punk ended up saying that he wasn't born into this business and that Cody was. He ended up saying personal to Cody is this business. He ended up saying that Cody is the son of one of the most legendary professional wrestlers of all time. One of the greatest. Punk ended up saying that they've traveled different paths and that he didn't have a famous dad. He ended up saying when Cody showed up at OVW, others saw Dusty. Punk saw Cody. Punk ended up saying that he saw the burden of his last name and how hard it would be to come out of that shadow. So Punk then congratulated Cody on doing that with flying colors. He ended up saying for all their differences, such as Cody in a nice suit and Punk in what he wore to the gym today, they've taken different paths, but have similar goals. Punk ended up saying that he didn't have a famous dad, and that he didn't have the American dream Dusty Rhodes, the son of a plumber, who was dying with kings and queens. So Punk was like, how does the rest go? Cody then answered, slept in alleys, and dined on pork and beans. He ended up saying Punk didn't have a famous father. His father was an electrician, and that's kind of ironic. And he ended up saying that CM Punk is more of the American dream than Cody is. Cody then turned. He started to pace in the ring. Cody ended up saying that he has something to talk about. He was like, let's talk about the pipe bomb. So Punk removed the uh, WWE brand from the mic, and he tossed it out of the ring. Punk sat on stage. He kept saying a few words, rallying off the formula for a revolution. Cody kept saying that Punk inspired so many and got so many into the business because of that. Cody kept saying that he was one of those that were inspired. But then Punk left. He kept saying when Punk left, he didn't pass the torch. He dropped it. He kept saying Punk didn't care who picked it up. But he knows who did. Cody did. Cody kept saying that everything Punk spoke about, Cody did. He kept saying where Punk talked, he actually walked. So Cody kept saying that makes him more CM Punk than CM Punk. So Punk now started to begin to pace. Punk took off his jacket. Punk then got in Cody's face. Punk ended up saying that he'll give Cody the full road to WrestleMania. CM Punk experience. He had saying that Cody has carried this company on his back for a soul-crushing two years. And that he is right around the corner. And they hand him the cover of the 2K24 game. Of course, a plug there for the uh, the game. He had saying right when... He's about to cross the finish line and finish the story. What's in the distance? A much bigger superstar who hasn't been around in a very long time coming to take it all from him. So, Koi ends up saying that there is CM Punk looking out for him again. And that he might be right. He ends up saying that Punk talked about the American dream. Dusty was his best friend. And like to quote John Wayne, John Wayne said, Courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. 
You know I'm saying? Punk may be right. But he has only one direction he can go. And that's forward. And that's in the Royal Rumble. Cody, I'm saying that direction goes through Punk. Cody, I'm going to walk off. Punk spun Cody around. And they went face to face. Both Punk and Cody end up angrily staring at each other. And both guys eventually backed up. And they left on opposite sides of the ring. And pretty much that was basically that. Overall, very fantastic segment this was. It leaned a lot into Bolt Punk and Cody's history. And it was great. It was a super intense face-off at the end between Cody and CM Punk there. I'm excited to see this at the Royal Rumble. You know, this has hype to it. But this segment was fire, in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic. And then it went to a video package showcasing 40 years of Hulkamania. And Hogan ended up talking about, you never know who will be in the Royal Rumble. And Hogan ended up saying, maybe he has one more in him. And when he said maybe he has one more in him, I'm like, please don't tell me that Hulk Hogan is going to be a surprise entry in the Rumble. Please don't. Please don't tell me that. We will need Hulk Hogan in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, it's just what we need to see. God, I hope not. And then we had Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark versus Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. I didn't even care about this match. You know what I was doing during this match? Looking up stuff on my computer. That's how much I gave a shit about this match. Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark end up winning the match. Stark end up hitting Candice LeRae with the Z360. And that was that. So Katana Chance and Katie Carter post-match got into the ring to stare down at Baszler and uh, Zoe Stark. The Kabuki Warriors, Asuka and Kairi Sane, end up attacking both Katana Chance and Katie Carter from behind. And this will set off their match on SmackDown on Friday. It's going to be Asuka and Kairi Sane versus Katana Chance and Katie Carter for the Women's Tag Team Championship. On Smackdown Friday. So that was that. And then we saw Jackie Redman. Jackie Redman was backstage with Drew McIntyre. Redman asked McIntyre if he has anything to say. About the war of words. With Cody Rhodes and CM Punk. To which McIntyre ended up saying to Jackie Redman. That he doesn't have any words. And that they're following in his footsteps. He kept saying speaking of words. He heard what Daniel Priest had to say. He kept saying that he's sick of people putting a negative spin on that time in his career. He kept saying people have told him they saved their lives by being consistent. And that you need to be physically and mentally tough to be a world champion. He kept saying that there's only room for one chosen one. And you're looking at him. So that was what Drew McIntyre had to say. But uh, Drew McIntyre, from what I read... You know, he still hasn't re-signed with WWE yet, so after WrestleMania 40, if McIntyre doesn't re-sign, he's a free agent. Where he goes, who knows? He go to AEW, work there, or he could go back to TNA. Who knows? So after he's finished with WrestleMania 40, I say he's a free agent. Who knows where McIntyre will go? And then we had damage control. They were walking backstage. Natalia and Tegan Knox walked up. And they were not happy with what uh, happened. So they got into an argument. So Adam Pierce ended up interrupting the argument. Pierce invited Bailey here to promote the Royal Rumble and the tag team match on Friday. Really? So. You invited Bailey here to promote the Rumble, take a leg drop from Nia Jax, and to promote the Kabuki Warriors versus Caden Carter and Katana Chance for Friday. So the Kodakai end up saying that if she has a problem, he can take it up with Nick Aldis. Bailey ends up saying that when the Kabuki Warriors win, he'll be seeing a lot more of them. Pierce then walked away, and he turned to Sangha 
and Veer of Indashir. Jinder Mahal ended up coming up to uh, Adam Pierce. Jinder Mahal ended up saying that he's the most talked about star of 2024. Where? I didn't see it. I don't see Jinder Mahal as the most talked about star of 2024. Who's talking about Jinder Mahal? He ended up saying that he went face to face with The Rock and injured Seth Rollins. Pierce ended up saying that he'll meet them in his office. So Pierce was like, oh, I need a drink. And that was that. So we're still pushing Jinder Mahal. God. Why are we still pushing him? Why is he still on TV? And then they said, what we're going to see next week on Raw in Tampa. We're going to get Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus, of course, DIY for the Undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. Jey Uso will take on Bronson Reed. Gunther will face Kofi Kingston for the Intercontinental Championship. So that's all set for Monday Night Raw next week in Tampa. The Monday Night Raw after the Royal Rumble. And then we went to the main event. Damian Priest versus Drew McIntyre. This was a good match here. Going to main event. Match ended up getting on the way. Both Priest and McIntyre end up staring at each other. They end up locking up. McIntyre end up hooking in a side headlock on Priest. Priest end up whipping McIntyre off. But McIntyre end up running Priest over with a shoulder tackle. Priest got up and shoved McIntyre. McIntyre quickly ended up hooking a side headlock. Priest whipped him off. And he absorbed the shoulder tackle. And he up. Bouncing into the ropes, he ended up taking McIntyre down with a shoulder tackle. McIntyre quickly popped up and shoved Priest back. Priest ended up forearm McIntyre in the head, started kicking away at him in the corner. Priest ended up sending McIntyre into the corner, but McIntyre ended up popping out and connected with a clothesline to Priest. McIntyre started punching and chopping away at Priest in the corner. Priest ended up clotheslining McIntyre out of the ring. Priest ended up following McIntyre out. He jumped off the steps, but McIntyre ended up catching Priest, and McIntyre delivered an overhead belly belly suplex to Priest on the floor. So we had later on McIntyre end up going for a belly to belly on the floor. Priest ended up shoving McIntyre head first into the ring post. Priest then ended up hitting the broken arrow to uh, McIntyre on the commentary table, but the table didn't break. So then Monday Night Raw went to commercial. Then when Monday Night Raw came back from the commercial, Priest started kicking away at McIntyre. Priest ended up reversing the whip. He lowered his head, and he ate a kick from McIntyre. McIntyre hit the ropes. Priest ended up following uh, McIntyre in. He ended up clotheslining McIntyre down. He ended up going for the cover, to which McIntyre ended up kicking out. So later on, we had our truth out there. <laughs> our truth end up emerging from the crowd to give Priest his cut of the merchandise. Priest end up shoving uh, R-Truth down. R-Truth end up saying that he'll put the money in the briefcase. So True was like to Priest, oh, what's the password? What's the password to the briefcase? So McIntyre started punching, uh, started punching Priest down. Priest end up hitting McIntyre with the South of Heaven. But the ref was messing around with R Truth. So this cost Priest the match here because of R Truth. So Priest was irate. He angrily threw R Truth out of the ring. And uh, the money uh, went all over in the ring. McIntyre ended up catching Priest with the Claymore. McIntyre ended up going for the cover. And they go. McIntyre ended up winning the match. And that was how Monday Night Raw. Went off the air. Overall, this was a good main event. McIntyre and Priest uh, worked really well here in the match. Our truth, you know, as some comedy in a small uh, portion of the match here, you know, him asking uh, Priest, "What's the password to the briefcase?" <laughs> but, but overall, my night raw, just an awful show it was. It started out hot. And then when we got to Ivy Nile versus Valhalla, boom, went downhill from there. But anyways, that's it for the Monday Night Raw review. Thank you all for watching.
Hope you all enjoyed this review. Definitely give the video a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all on Wednesday for Dynamite. So, see you all then.